96.7 FM WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning in. It's 9.05 a.m. here on Telegraph Hill, where it is time once again for Veterans Talk, the first Tuesday of each month. We do this program, a chance to check in with the Veterans Service Office and the Department of Veterans Affairs. I'm A.J. Brammer here in studio on Telegraph Hill, joined as always by Joe DeVito, now the State District Service Officer for the Southeast Region. Joe DeVito, thank you very much for coming back on the program. All right. Well, thanks for having me. And so obviously, um, in the past, we've talked to you. You've been the uh, Jefferson County Veterans Service Officer, but just these last couple months here, I know you've been getting into your new position as the State District Service officer for the Department of Veterans Affairs. I sure have, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs um, oversees the 92 county veteran service officers. Um, and there's a couple couple things in there about hiring and other things, and we're in charge of training, uh, protocols, job description, and that thing kind of stuff. Um, it's an odd setup because the county commissioners each appoint or hire a veteran service officer, and they provide the uh, hours, uh, pay, and office for the service, but they work under the direction of the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs. So it's a great convoluted government system there that uh, the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs is working real hard at working within the system to achieve our goal of bringing the best services we possibly can to Hoosier veterans. Um, so one way they've, they've come up with is these district state service officers. Uh, basically putting uh, the Indiana Department of Veteran Affairs in each district so that uh, the service officer is in the district all the time and working for their counties so those counties don't have to travel to Indianapolis or always rely on getting to Indianapolis for different things. We can bring that office to them. So. Um, this is a great opportunity for uh, when we have a new service officer like we do in Jefferson County here. Uh, my replacement, Faith Weir, we've been working diligently for the last three weeks or so, uh, bringing her up to speed. We had the office closed for a couple weeks for training. That worked out really well. We did take appointments and work with some veterans um, so that she could uh, learn the processes, applications, and uh, all the intricacies of the job at her desk in her office on her computer with the veteran she's going to serve so that's a great model for training it gives it gives those cvso's an opportunity uh, like I said, in their own environment to learn what they're doing. And when uh, in the past they would have to go up to Indiana, Indianapolis to IDVA for training, and then also have we have an annual conference in June. June. But when you learn something offsite and you're kind of cramming a bunch of things into a conference type schedule, then you got to try and take that information back to your office. Um, and then you may not deal with some of the things for a little bit. So it gets a little confusing and it's, it's uh, not the best training model. I think this on-site training model is something that's really going to really gonna benefit our Hoosier veterans as far as getting the services from a county service officers uh, went right there in our own county. So and you're definitely, you're coming from a perspective as a former veteran service officer, you see a easy, pretty easy for you to see the value in it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jefferson County, um, uh, like a lot of other counties, has a little bit limited budget, a little bit limited hours for their service offices. Um, I'm really happy to say that uh, Faith is now a hired employee for the county as opposed to an appointed position, so she will be full-time. Um, she's open right now. Uh, the office is back open. She's she's taking appointments and working with veterans, um, checking in with her a little bit here and there, and she's got uh, questions for me. So I go take care of that with her, but she's there 9 to 4, Monday through Friday. Um, uh, on one of our administrative assistants, Sue Goins, is going to stick around for one or two days a week with Faith as well, so that'll be another good thing for veterans in the county. So, you know, I think it's, it's like I said, it's another opportunity for the state district service officers to be in the district working hands-on with our county service officers with the one goal of bringing uh, excellent service to our Hoosier veterans. And I think that, you know, seeing guys like you in that position, you know, you coming on programs like this, other just the raising the visibility, that also goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, a great model, and I think the IDVA up in Indy did a good job uh, in in filling the positions. We got five of the six are now filled, and I think the sixth one, uh, our North. East is, is, has been hired. They're just finishing up some of the background checks and stuff. So we should have a full force of six district service officers. Uh, we'll be meeting shortly as soon as we're all filled and going over uh, game plans as far as protocols and stuff. What we want to do is, 
uniform the county service offices so any veteran walking into any county service office is going to get the same great service um, we're all using a standardized database across the state now uh, we're mandatory accreditation for all the county service officers which is another great uh, step in bringing uniformity to uh, some standard operating procedures to each county service office. And you kind of talked about it already, but uh, Faith Ware, the new Jefferson County Veteran Service Officer, um, that's it's been a pretty smooth transition getting her getting her into the position. It really has. She's she's a Navy veteran. Uh, her husband's a Navy veteran as well, and uh, she's really picking up well. She's she's got a lot of experience as far as uh, clerical paperwork. I think she. She did some accounting work in the past, and she did some uh, stuff like that in the Navy as well. So she's really grabbed a hold of that. Her computer proficiency is great, and uh, she's kind of hit the ground running, and she's, uh, she's really taken off, and I think she has a great personality for the job as well. So I think it's going to be a great transition for the folks in Jefferson County. And Joe, we, we talked about, you know, with your new position, obviously Joe left the Jefferson County Veteran Service Officer job for this uh, state job, um, but a lot of it's still the same just in terms of you um, getting the word out there. Absolutely. Um, you know, the county service officers are uh, benefits application experts, and that's what they're there to interact with the veterans in their communities or the veterans' dependents in their communities have an understanding of what benefits they would qualify for and if the veterans want to apply for that they're there to give them expert knowledge in gathering supporting documentation preparing the claims properly on all the right forms and sending it to the right place uh, applying in, in in the most precise way they can and that's what they're there to do um, one of the things I'm there to help them with is keep them on task doing that job and there's a lot of other things community outreach that's super important for these jobs for people to know the office is there what the office does what the office doesn't do um, and that's what I'm here to help with and each district service officer is there to do in our district so I'll be doing a lot of uh, community outreach and uh, also working with each individual county government to kind of let them know exactly what their office is doing there um, and how important it is to them as far as uh, the, the money that the office brings into veterans. A lot of the benefits are tax-free benefit, monetary benefits into the veterans' pockets, and they turn around and spend that money right in their community. So it's important for someone to be there to help them apply for these benefits that they deserve to get and bring that into the county. So uh, along those lines, one of, the, one of the neat things about my job is I get to present to a different uh, couple different organizations and groups and really want to make sure that I have an understanding of every organization whether it's a private organization a state or a federal uh, benefit program or anything that can assist a veteran that my each individual county I I serve understands what does doesn't work for their county so they can move their veterans in the right direction to get any assistance available and uh, the partnership with Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs and each individual county government is is vital to this because we have the county governments um, putting the person in the job for the county service officer supplying their budget supplying their office hours um, and support staff, but then they work under the direction of the Indiana Department of Veter Veteran Affairs where we do the training and support for each office. So it's really important for the county governments and the IDVA to kind of work together because we have this common goal of the county service office providing this excellent service to our Hoosier veterans. Um, and along those lines, I'm really happy to say I'll be presenting to the Indiana County Commissioners at their state conference coming up in a couple months. And uh, one of the things we want to stress that I'll be working on with my presentation is, is that partnership. We want to make sure everybody's on the same page and everybody's working together to get our, our Hoosier veterans the best benefits we can. And that connect goes a long way, you know, just forming those partnerships and having the support there for it. And like we, we talked about that, you know, you come from being a former veteran service officer, having the county behind your back is a, um, it, it, it means a lot. It really does. And, uh, you know, I, having the, the privilege of serving our veterans in Jefferson County for the last almost eight years, I can <laughs> say that... Um, the county government, the county commissioners, county council has always worked well with me along the way, understanding where we needed to grow and other things we wanted to do in the office to provide that service and taking another great step now, like I said, in bringing a full-time position um, with Faith down there at the county service office. So that's one of the things I want to help spread out through the state that we really want to make sure that that partnership is there. 
Um, it's when a veteran comes into the office um, sometimes they've interacted with VA federal VA in the past sometimes they kind of think the office is a VA office where it's more it's a county office and unfortunately some veterans have had negative experiences with the VA in the past or they or they think it's going to be that way so for a veteran to enter a county service office and interact with the service officer who's friendly and knowledgeable willing to help and and available as far as being open uh, regular office hours and someone there to help them is is so key to our veterans and they really appreciate it so that's we want to really make sure that every every office in every county is there with someone who's an expert at what they do and available to the veterans to help them along the way and the more you're able to spread the word about those services the more veterans you're able to help absolutely and so kind of talking about that, I know uh, transitioning into a uh, next point, our next uh, talking point on the program, uh, you had a couple of um, other, uh, you had yeah. information you want to give to the veterans on certain I, yeah, abilities. I did. I did. You know, one, one of the main goals of the, of the, of the uh, show that we do is just so folks know that there's a county veteran service office in every county in the state. Uh, in Jefferson County, it's Faith Weir. She's the county service officer. 315 Jefferson Street. It's right across from the courthouse on Jefferson in the Jefferson County Courthouse Annex. She's there from 9 to 4, Monday to Friday. Um, and the number down there is 812-265-3600. So Faith is there to help veterans and their dependents understand and navigate state and federal benefits and then help them apply and there's one in every county so i know we reach across county lines with the airwaves here so in the surrounding counties if you're hearing this there's an office in your county as well and that's what they're there to do is provide that service for our veterans and one of those uh services we'll get into um is um, we've been seeing a lot of a lot a lot of vietnam veterans are approaching a certain age and some uh health issues as well so we want to really make sure for anybody out there who knows a veteran, if you're a veteran, the family member of a veteran or the friend of a veteran, have them give the office a call, get an appointment with whatever office is local to them, and find out what benefits are available. There, there are things out there, and a lot of the folks who come in for one thing wind up leaving with the knowledge of two or three other benefits that are available. And with our uh, boots on the ground Vietnam veterans, there's a uh, a, um, a growing list of presumptive disorders so there's uh, things on that list diseases disabilities or disorders that they may suffer from now that the VA presumes um, is associated with their exposure to the herbicide agent orange while they were in Vietnam and some of the more common ones that we see are uh, type 2 diabetes prostate cancer, lung cancer, um, there's uh, ischemic heart disease, and unfortunately about 20 other things on the list. But uh, these things are, you know, if a veteran served in Vietnam and they now have this condition, it's a presumptive disorder, meaning they will get a claim approved through the federal VA. And that'll help them with free health care on any of those issues, as well as enrollment in the VA health care. It'll help them with a monetary benefit every month. And really, it'll help them with survivor's benefits. So any, any Vietnam veterans out there who are married or have dependent children under 18 or disabled children over 18, um, getting this claim through, getting established in the system with these presumptive disorders can uh, really possibly benefit your dependents too once the veteran passes away or hopefully that's not too soon but you know so there's a lot of things that that they should know um, there's a lot of planning um, that veterans can look into the VA offers life insurance to veterans the VA has the home loan guarantees through the federal government um, there's a lot of different benefits through the state available so we've gone over a bunch in the past and uh, they're, they're out there. Uh, VA.gov is one place to look. Um, IN.gov, and you can put in veterans, and you'll get to the, the IDVA page. But your, your county service officer is your expert on that. Uh, grab your DD-214, get an appointment, and go see Faith or whoever it is in your county, and they can help explain to you what might be available for you. And it's you know there's no better time than now to find out. And we talk about it all the time on this program that it never hurts to ask. They're, like you said, you might not be aware that you qualify for absolutely 
coverage that can go a long way. Absolutely. VA healthcare as well as other things. So it's it's important to just go find out. Definitely another shout out for RKO Enterprises. We really appreciate those guys for uh, getting us on the air. Yeah, I mean this is uh, two year two uh, of their of their sponsorship. So it's 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 so great for Keith to step up and help us out with this program. Um, Keith's a Navy veteran, and he understands how important it is to get this word out. And we really appreciate his support. Also want to thank Smoke and Crows um, on the video end of things with Kentucky Anna News and the Bridging the Gap program. Um, the Smoke and Crows has stepped up and is helping to sponsor so we can get these uh, videos done and we can get the word out this way as well. So any and all of these folks that are helping us out, we can get this information out. It's really appreciated. As we come up on the end of the program, is there anything else you want to hit on? I do want to hit real quick. Uh, I've spoken before about the Jefferson County Veterans Council. Um, that's a group of uh, it's a council that's been set up for about, I think, 10 or 15 years now, and it, it has representatives from each of the veterans' organizations. Uh, Faith is now on board, and she's a member as well. I'm happy to say that I've stayed on board with our Jefferson County Veterans Council. Um, we were uh, the group that helped bring the new memorial on the courthouse lawn, um, and then they have a new project coming up this year. Um, you'll hear more about it. It's going to be a, a veterans uh, banner program that will be hanging on the flagpoles. Um, we have a meeting today, and I'm going to get some more vitals, and so next month we'll talk more about that. But I always want to say thanks to the council and the members on it for all the hard work they do and that there's, there's people out there in the county working hard. Um, the main thing that council has always done and, and um, still continues to do is run the Disabled American Veterans Van Service. So I always want to let people know. Uh, if you're a veteran and you have a medical appointment at the New Albany Clinic or at Rob Lee Rex VA Medical Center in Louisville and you need a ride, this service can get you to and from your appointment. So it's a great service that they do. Uh, they, they run on volunteer drivers, so we, they're always looking for drivers. And you don't have to be on a regular schedule. You can drive one day a month. It doesn't matter. Whatever you can do, this is a great way to reach out and directly affect our Jefferson County veterans because they need these drivers any and all the help they can get doing that and you can you, interact with veterans spend part of a day with them and really help out so that's a great way to do it um, if you want information on driving or volunteering to drive give Faith a call 812-265-3600 down at the Veteran Service Office and she can get you going in the right direction and just a little bit of your time goes such a long way helping it, our area veterans it really does I'm talking with Jefferson, the former Jefferson County Veterans <laughs> Service Officer Joe DeVito, who is currently the State District Service Officer for the Southeast Region of the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs. As we join in once again for Veterans Talk, Joe, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And we definitely appreciate Joe coming by. Again, he is the State District Service Officer for the Southeast Region with the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs. Show we do the first Tuesday of each month. It's Veterans Talk. Mm -hmm.